Welcome to Write Byte number four. I'm Chris Kilgore, Writing Resource Coordinator for the School of Social Work at the University of Texas at Arlington, and this Write Byte will make the argument that most of the time in writing assignments we'll need to make an argument. Most forms of academic writing require that we make an argument rather than state an unsupported opinion and provide naked data, but not all assignments will say so explicitly. Many students will ask me if an assignment wants their opinion, and I will usually say no. An opinion is something we believe or say without supporting it. But that doesn't mean the assignment doesn't want something that's uniquely yours. An opinion is an unsupported assertion, but an argument makes an assertion, a claim, and then supports the claim with reasons and evidence. Most assignments will ask us to have something to say and to support it. If we just make claims, we're stating an opinion. And if we just spew facts and figures on the page, we might be providing information, but we won't be offering evidence. By the way, the model I use here is called the Toulmin model, but you probably don't need to know that. Not all assertions or statements are useful in making claims. A claim is usually a statement about an active issue, a statement with which some people might meaningfully disagree. So if I say 40% of the sample identified as African Americans, I'm not making a claim. People can check my math, but other than that, nobody would likely disagree. But if I say the sample includes a disproportionate number of participants, well, that's a claim that I'd probably need to support. In between the claim and the data, however, I need to offer a reason that links them. We can usually think of reasons as the kind of statements or examples that would follow a because in a sentence, like my sample sentence here. The sample includes a disproportionate number of African American participants because there was a greater proportion than in the general population in the city. The evidence is what we would usually think of as empirical data, and it could take a variety of forms. The example here is numerical demographic data, but depending on the kind of claim we might want to make, we might use individual testimony, expert professional judgment, or our own experience as a practitioner working with a client. Now, when we leave out some of the key elements of argumentation, the argument becomes less effective. Here's an example of a less effective argument. The sample includes a disproportionate number of African American participants. African American students only make up 20% of the population. Now, this example is less effective because first we offered no reason to collect the claim with the data and therefore we forgot to include all of the data. Arguments don't just use sources because somebody said we have to. It's not a matter of authority either. Some students have said they feel like the professor only trusts others' opinions and not ours as students. And that's not quite the point. The point is that we want to make our own claim and then support it appropriately and adequately. So I might update our inadequate argument so that it supports the argument more effectively. The claim the sample includes a disproportionate number of African American participants because African American students make up 40% of the sample but only 20% of the population. Note that I didn't add more sources and I didn't change the fact that a source was cited, I just provided more complete support. The argument I've constructed here is a small and simple one but it could fit well within a larger project demonstrating what we know about an issue but also suggesting how the available information, the knowledge bases, uh, might be incomplete. That's the kind of argument a literature review might make. And this is how arguments work. They have a nesting structure where smaller claims, reasons, and evidence support larger and more comprehensive claims. Often each paragraph in a writing project will need to make a claim and support it with reasons and evidence. In the examples in this write bite, you may have noticed that I used only one kind of evidence, numerical information from a professional source like a journal article. But in social work writing, it's more common to integrate that kind of evidence with information we've observed ourselves or gathered by talking to a client. We can call that kind of writing hybrid writing. How does it work? Stay tuned for write bite number five.